Hello guys, Josh here, and I am back into YouTube. Here we go. Look at this. In Euro Truck Simulator 2 today, and uh, do you like it? It's nice. I think it looks rather nice. This is uh, this is being recorded directly off of my new PC. Uh, obviously, it came on was it Saturday just gone from this video. It's Saturday before. Yeah, it was the Saturday just gone on on the on sort of previous Saturday to this video. Uh, it arrived, and I've been spending the last few days getting everything set up and installed and benchmarked and all of that good stuff. And it's ready. It's ready to go. Uh, it's, it's well, it's been ready to go the last few days, but it's been much of a case of getting used to the fact that I now actually have a decent level of frame rates and and, and whatnot. It's, you know, the things you would expect from when you're transitioning over to a, a new PC and it, it's better performing, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, back into the swing of things, uh, back into YouTube. It's obviously the first upload I've done in quite a while. Uh, you'll know from my last video the reasons for that. If not, then uh, head over to that previous video and it'll explain everything of why there's massive, massive gaps if you're looking through the channel and you're seeing, well, there's loads of gaps here, why, what's the point? Um, that video does actually expand it, so I do recommend you go and check that out. Very, very quickly before we get on with the video, I just want to say thank you so, so, so much to all of my subscribers. Um, I, I'm amazed that I've still got so many subscribers after having such an inactive channel. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for, for you, for those guys who have not pressed unsubscribe at any point during the time and have kept the, my channel in their subscription list. I promise you, as of now, you will not be disappointed that much, I can promise you. Anyway, on with the video, what are we doing today? So we're over in uh, Grimsby at the moment, in uh, the sort of, uh, east of the east of the UK. And we're in this lovely Scania S uh, 730 series, uh, obviously for the 730 horsepower engine. And we're taking this trailer of pears. We've got 19 tonnes of pears. All right. And we're taking it from here uh, up to Newcastle uh, to a place called Cell Plan. So I would assume they're getting ready to go out to supermarkets and stuff. So that's uh, that's going to be the run for today. We're in the Viva Trucking livery, uh, vivatrucks.co.uk. This video is not being sponsored by them or anything before somebody says it. I just I recently joined at a VTC, the Viva Trucking VTC. And I figured that today would be a good chance to sort of uh, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So get some more deliveries logged in Viva Trucking and throw out this video. It's going to take about four hours game time today. So we're looking about a half hour, 40 minute video. And most of that thus far has just been me talking on it. Mods, in terms of mods today, uh, I've got the Scania Griffin official DLC. That's running, as you can see, with the Scania sort of stuff there. We've got the special transport DLC, which is where the really nice LED beacons come from, but we won't be needing those at the moment. Uh, we've got some. Uh, I've got some. Um, I've got a V8 sound mod going as well, which you won't hear because it's in drive. There we go. So it sounds better in the cab, but running that as well, and I. Th I think that's really about it. There's just other various mods like economy prices and things like that. I'll leave a list of, of the mods all in my description below, but they're all Steam Workshop mods, um, all by the Viva Trucking ones, which I don't know what any running at the moment, but um, they're all Steam Workshop mods. So I'll, I'll write a list down, then you can just head over to the Steam Workshop and check those out for yourself. Anyway, on with the video. Okay, right. We're in the cab. I need to reset my trip counter very quickly. This is not a new truck. It's done a fair few miles. I mean, it's relatively new. It's got 622 miles on the clock. So essentially the distance from the north of Scotland down to the south of the UK. That's about 629 miles, which is the length of Britain, I think. So it's, it's not too bad. It's done a fair few. It's done about four deliveries, this truck, so far. So there we go. Anyway, we're into drive. The handbrake is off. And turn the hazard off. I want to see out the bloody window. It's 
speed limit's 30. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's automatic gearbox um, today. I'm in the normal power on the automatic adaptive transmission. So it's, uh, I'll change at shift point, the predefined shift points, then if it needs to rev higher, then it'll rev higher depending on the hill or something like that. Works a little bit like a kick down, really. Uh, apparently, this this V8 mod is like a modern day V8, so it's not as like tanky as older V8s, but this is like the modern day, the Euro emission friendly V8 engine or something like that. I, I only very briefly read the description when I installed it. So. It's up to sixty. Which is the fastest truck can go on a dual carriageway in the UK. Must be really lazy and use cruise control. See, that's not we're coming off in a minute. You'll have to apologise for my bad microphone quality. Uh, I know it's going to be bad. I'm fully aware of that. Um, I did buy myself a new headset recently on Amazon when I got my new PC and it literally took me about, I mean it was like a proper headset, it was really nice and it was like a proper gaming headset, it had the RGB lighting on the side, it was really really beasty. Anyway it arrived, I ordered it on Amazon Prime so it arrived overnight, which was not, I say overnight, it was trans, uh, delivered, sort of um, dispatched overnight, sorry. So, Jesus Christ. Pretty sure I wasn't that close to that railing, I'll be fair. Oh, whatever. Um, anyway, where was it? Yeah. So I ordered it, it came overnight and stuff, so I picked it up when I finished work, because I've got an Amazon locker where I work, so it's, it's really convenient to use the Amazon lockers. So I picked it up, and then I got home, and I'm not kidding, it literally took me half an hour to set up, to, to even figure out how it works. Because you have to, it doesn't tell you, like, you have to use adapters and stuff. I didn't know it comes with them, I just I didn't read it because I'm bad at life. So I finally got it set up and everything. And then it weren't working. And by not working, I mean one of the, like, the left headphone wasn't working. The right was fine, but the left wasn't. So Amazon have actually screwed me over. So I'm using some, like, crappy microphone that I've got, and I've sort of just rigged sort of rigged that up so it's it's not a it's only a temporary solution that's gonna last all of circa two weeks when I get paid and I'll buy a proper like Asus headset or something like that. Looks so real. I mean look at it. They have a bump there then haven't they? Look at the water quite I mean look at the reflections off the water. You don't realise how beautiful Euro Truck can actually look. Like it, it looks absolutely amazing. When you ramp the settings up, you can make this this sim look absolutely spectacular. It really does, and it's fluent as well. I always used to think that ETS and ATS, like SCS, used to badly optimise their games. But the more and more I think about it, the more and more I think it really was just down to my bad PC. And I know it's going to be not be good anyway because my old PC specs were really low. No, 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 no. Don't kill me for that. But what I mean is, is that I used to think that you could have, they could have always optimised it and it would have squeezed a few more frames out. But I'm on virtually max graphics. I think I'm at everything's on pretty much medium to high. I've got 60 FPS, I'm recording this video, OBS is capturing this at 60 FPS, and I've still got 60 FPS. So I really can't fault them, because turns out it really is just my PC. Although I, I'm coming off here, so that's happening. I feel that they've gone a little bit overkill on the physics for the cabin accessories. That dice just seems to be going around a bit. He's going to come out. 
like a mean lord. Stanol. Is that a new company? Look at the detailing on that trailer. I can't zoom in for it. Look at the detail on that trailer. It's got the stickers on it, like the flammable and the harmful. It's harmful to environment, that one on the right. He's got a appalling performance for a Scania, but it is AI, so what do you expect? Can't overtake either because it's um, solid white. You, you in the UK when when it's those like solid white lines, like what's here now on the right, means you can't overtake because you're allowed to overtake on country roads. You're allowed to overtake other cars, but only when the the lines are dashed like this. Now I can overtake, but when they're solid, you can't. Um, usually, because there's things like uh, um, crest, like the the crests on hills. There's like hills coming up with a steep crest, so you can't see the other side of the hill. So no, you can't see oncoming traffic. Or there's like this, where it's a blind bend, you can't see around the corner. I'm quite surprised this isn't double winded actually, because like there, you can see that van coming around the corner, but on that one, you couldn't see around the corner. So that's a blind bend. See, like now, I can't see round this corner from coming traffic, so it'd be too dangerous to overtake. So it's solid whites. And the, the truck limit in the UK for a, a national speed limit, single carriageway or road. So this is a single carriageway because you can only be in one lane as your designated lane. Um, it's 50 mile an hour. And then if it's dual carriageway upwards, so you've got two, three, four lanes to pay, like we were on the motorway then, then it's 60 is the limit. And obviously, you know, give special restrictions for like oversized loads or heavy loads. Then there's there's slightly um, different restrictions. I have to say, this V8 mod does sound rather beautiful. IRL, you'd use the retarder, but I don't have enough bucks. Although I could probably map my paddle shifters to the retarder and then map the gear, because I use those to change into drive and reverse. I could probably map that to something else, to be honest. Because you're meant to use the retarder to stop brake fade, so I don't like catch fire and stuff. You can actually set brakes on fire. not got as much power as I have. But that's the adaptive transmission doing its thing there. It was holding the gear for long. You can see now to where it's changing to what it was back there. It holds it for longer if it's got to struggle up a hill or something. It's like Topodyne or Senso Top if you're if you're sort of a bus enthusiast then or, or whatever then you'll probably understand what Topodyne and Senso Top is but it's essentially a bit of software that on a normal flat road will not let the engine rev any higher than said than said revs before it before it changes gear but if it's going uphill then it'll allow it to rev higher and downshift earlier hold the gear for longer and things like that. It's like a really eco-friendly kick down if you like. Essentially that's what it is. It's a really eco-friendly kick down. It's the, like the simplest, although it's not, that's the simplest way of looking at it. And I'm on the hard shoulder, rip me. I am probably thinking, because I've only got, although it's enough fuel to cover the journey, I've only got a thousand miles left on the on the truck so I'm thinking there's services coming up surely I'm thinking we'll pull in and get some fuel I'll 
put in here, we'll get some fuel. Just realised I didn't put my phone on silent, so if it goes off at any point during this video, then I apologise, but I can't be asked to put it on to silent now. Slow it down. Grab some at dieselonium. Neutral, engine off. That's a really nice animation. You'll like this sound mod. Especially the last bit when it's finished fueling. Listen to this. That's the fuel filler cap being screwed back on. Getting in the truck. Door closing. Seatbelt on. Key in the ignition. It's part of the sound fixes mod. Uh, version 1.8, I believe it is. Again, that's on the Steam Workshop, so I'll put that in the list as well. Engine on. Parking brake off. And we're going. A full tank of fuel. How about that? going to do is I'm going to stop here so I can use more of this runner. I'm not entering the carriage ride like five mile an hour. If we ever get out that is. He's going that bad. Bourgeois. Oh, fuel tank is on the road tonight. There's another DSV there. Must be convoying. That would be quite cool, actually, if it was simulating a convoy. We'll get out eventually. Another DSV over there? Well, there was. Oh, come on! There we go, I'm taking it. Say thank you. I'll tell you what though, this truck does not hang about. Look at it go. So, YouTube is uh, making a massive, massive comeback. It's, it's. I swear down, it's no longer just going to be the occasional video in there. So I'll upload a video later this week and then actually take three months to do it. Um, it it's not, I promise you, it's not going to be like that anymore. I, I'm making a massive, massive comeback to YouTube. So what my plan is going to be, um, and if you do follow me on Twitter, at JoshStephen99, uh, if you do follow me on Twitter, you'll know the past few days I've been posting about video schedules and things like that. Um, so my plan is that there's going to be a minimum of one video every week. And that one video every week will be a flight sim video. Uh, that links back to while I was about into my last video, how I was saying I was going to start switching over to becoming a, more of a flight sim channel. Uh, that's going to be my sort of my target now a sort of target audience if you like it's going to be flight sim but that's not pushing everybody else to one side at all because I, i'm aware that a majority of my subscribers at the moment are uh omsi community sort of basis omsi basis i'm fully 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 aware of that so then maybe uh there'll be a second installment on on a, a, a week or maybe it'll be every couple of weeks there'll be a second installment of a, a random a random game. It might be Euro Truck, it might be Omsi, it might be a brand new game that's just come out and I felt like doing a first release look or something like that, if you, like an initial release look or a beta might come out of something. I don't know and we'll go and test something, who knows. But that's going to be my plan. Obviously my time is, believe it or not, 
ridiculously limited for a 19 year old it really 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 is um i keep saying um why do i keep saying um it's like i'm praying yeah my my time is is really really restricted for a 19 year old obviously i do a lot of hours at work I'm, i do sort of up with a 36 hours a week so i don't have a lot of time on my hands now on the two days off i have got so so many other things to do but I will dedicate at least half of, or a part of one of my days to getting a video out. And then I'll see rendering it, re editing it, rendering it. Because that takes so little time now. I've got the, the hardware to do it. And the software for that matter. But I've had the software for ages. But now I've got the actual hardware that's capable of re rendering a video at a, a remotely decent time. It just makes everything so much easier. So, that's that's going to be the plan. I, I haven't sort of figured out a day. So, I don't think there's really going to be a, a day as such when a video comes out. Like, say, you know, oh, it comes out on a Tuesday or something like that. I don't think that's going to be uh, as such a thing because I'll see, I work really strange patterns. I don't have two set days off in a week at the moment. Um, that might change, but I don't know. But I don't have set days off at work, so it's really, really hard to say when a video is going to come out. I might like, I don't know, once a month or something at the beginning of the month when I get rotors and stuff. I might like go, right, so for this month, on this is the video schedule for this month. I might do that and put that on Twitter because uh, that'll be the main means of communication for like basic bulletins like that. That's what I'm using Twitter for. It's like bulletins for the channel. So I might do that just like say, right, this month for like, I don't know, June to July on this week it's going to be on this day on that week it'll be on this day and on that week it'll be this day um because that'll probably help my planning as well let's be honest but that's that'll be a thought to think about it'll be a couple of weeks before that goes into effect anyway surely because i have no money to make my flight sim look nice and although i could quite easily go and make a flight sim video right now and push that out today or tomorrow or whatever I would rather wait and make something... I'd rather wait when I know I can make something look better than what it is. It's that simple. I mean, I could go and do it, not right now, but I don't want to. I want to make my sim look nice first, because it's, it's more enjoyable as well. Because you don't feel like you're wasting time then either, because you get to enjoy making the video at the same time. Roadworks coming up, so I'm going to start slowing down. This coach is probably going to undertake me. I think I'm in the right lane as well, which is perfect. I'll just stay in this lane. Well, apparently, we've made it to Newcastle. I'm going to guess that that really, really tall dome-shaped thing over there, sort of... I'll point an arrow to it when I edit the video. Looks like Wembley, but I know it's not Wembley. I'm going to guess that's the Metro Centre. At around oh, actually, there might be a better shot of it when we come around this corner. I'm going to assume that that massive building over there is the Metro Centre. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. I don't really know Newcastle very well. In fact, I don't know it at all because I've never been to New... Oh, I've, I've, never, I've passed through Newcastle. I'm actually in the wrong lane. So here's another UK tip when you're in the wrong lane. Instead of trying to cut across and like cause an accident, if you do a full loop round the roundabout, you then have right of way over, on, over other traffic. So you can get across easily. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Turn my hazards on, did not want to do. See, I now have priority. Check the mirror. That's how you fix going the wrong way in the UK. Look, we got a beer lorry in front of us. Torborg. That sounds like Scandinavian. It's got to be said. 
Scandinavians, if there's any Scandies watching, you make amazing cider. In fact, you just make amazing drink in general. We are cell plan, right. Now, they have not thought about that placement very well, have they? Because I need to get really close to that other trailer now. Right, where do I have one? Oh. Okay, well, I didn't was just going to have a look, but my mouse keeps double-clicking things when I'm only single-clicking at the moment. I think my mouse is broken, so I need to get a new one. But that's not overly hard to get into, because well, if I just, like, swing it right the way around, we can then use the, the length of the sort of depot, I think it is. It's, it's a depot, really, isn't it? We can then use the length of the depot to straighten up and stuff. Because that swing has worked out perfectly to line the truck up, so now the trailer will straighten out and it'll be dead, dead level. In theory. Perfect, okay, right. Let's have a look. And we're a little off, but we're about right. So if we... get into reverse first, which is a good help. And then we'll just sort of straighten, sort of adjust the trailer. Small shallow movements is all you need. Trailers, they, they, the trailers turn quite easily, so you don't need to like go locked, lock to lock. Just adjust. It. All you've got to remember is that Everything works opposite in reverse, so you turn right, the trailer will go left, you turn left, the trailer will go right. That's all you've got to remember when you're reversing Arctic. And we're in. We'll press T. Test Drive Limited, one of seven. I don't know what that is. Oh, by the way, I'm using the uh, Viva Trucks uh, events profile. That's why I've got like a ridiculous amount of XP and money. Just thought I'd say that. All right, take a screenshot of that quickly so I can enter that into Viva Trucks later. And there we have it. One, the trailer of 19 tons of pairs delivered with absolutely no problems whatsoever. Guys, thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed making it. I'm sorry that my voice is quite possibly the most monotonic, monotonic, sorry, boring voice that has ever walked the earth, but that's just the way it is. Uh, there'll either be another video out this week, possibly. I'm not sure, though. Uh, if not this week, then definitely, obviously, next week. Again, I'm not sure what that'll be. Uh, it might be another SCS game, it might be on C I I don't know, I'll see what I get up to, I'll see what I feel like, what I feel like rambling on about. That's all from me for today's video though. Thank you very much, and I will sure I will, shall, I shall, will, will, shall. Okay, English please. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.